This is the Sophos XGS 2100, a powerful next generation firewall that I just added to my new home server rack. It connects all the devices in my network and protects my critical servers. It also scans the traffic in my home network to detect exploits and malware through deep packet inspection. <laughs> Absolutely amazing stuff. And I also connected two new Sophos access points that are powering my Wi-Fi at home. The firewall entirely manages these devices and that's making my wireless and network management extremely easy and comfortable at home. Uh, by the way, I recently made a Twitter post where I asked you guys if you are already using a firewall solution in your home lab and it seems like many people don't, but at least plan to do it. So I hope this will be very interesting for you guys who aren't already familiar with firewalls, but also if you are already using PFSense or OpenSense for example, you still might want to watch because I want to show you some conceptual ideas and how I've structured my home network and of course talk about some of the advanced features firewalls, especially the Sophos XG can do. And I'm really excited about the new Sophos XGS rack devices, they are just fantastic. So many thanks to Sophos for sending me these devices. And let's let's start unboxing them. So there are some smaller packages here. I just need to put away for a second because I just want to start with the biggest one. So this is a oh, oh man. So this one is really heavy and this contains my new firewall device. So let's unbox it. I guess this won't be the firewall. It's a getting started guide. And this ethernet cable. What should I do with this? <laughs> okay, so let's put this aside for a while and unbox the firewall. <clears throat> so here we have the Sophos XGS 2100. So this will power all the network devices and control the traffic in my home network. It is the latest series of Sophos XG appliances, while this is, by the way, the smallest one for the rack mounts. It has 8 gigabit Ethernet ports, which are fully programmable. So you can configure them as local network ports, you can configure them as bridges, uplinks to internet, VLAN tags, and so on. So really cool stuff. And it also has some two SFP plus modules. But as far as I know, they only support one gigabit. So that's why I ordered another box. So here we have a four port SFP plus flexi port module for the Sophos XGS, which supports 10 gigabit. So this module can be plugged into the XGS to extend the ports and the functionalities. And there are also other flexi ports for these devices, which have additional Ethernet ports, for example, or this one here, like SFP plus modules, depending on what you need. And into the flexi port, I will put these four 10 gigabit uh, JBIGs. So I hope that will all work because this is the first time I'm playing around with 10 gigabit. But I probably will do a separate video on this if that's something you're interested in. So um, stay tuned for that. I've also ordered access points from Sophos. So in case you don't know it, Sophos has also access point that you can connect and manage directly in the firewall. You can also do this with your Sophos XG home license, by the way, or you can control these access points in Sophos Central in the cloud. So they aren't always the cheapest, but you can get them in various ranges from small office access points to some bigger ones. But I just ordered them to replace my old access points in my network. So the most exciting part for me is absolutely this device here, the Sophos XGS. So let's get this thing into my server rack. Okay, so that is what I've done the last weeks. And I think the new firewall appliance just looks amazing in this server rack. I've now connected everything and I've done the basic setup. And as I said in the past, I was running the Sophos XG as a virtual machine inside my Proxmox server. This one here. And there were two network cards in this server which I had connected to the virtual firewall. One for the local network that I connected to my switch and one for the internet connection. 
No, that isn't needed anymore because I now have the firewall as a physical hardware appliance here. And I now have the freedom to use and configure all the Ethernet ports and the FlexiPort module exactly how I want. That of course gives me much more flexibility to test specific scenarios, isolate my network and create separate firewall rules on all these interfaces. For example, I have connected my switch to the first port on the Sophos XG to connect all my Ethernet devices in my house. It doesn't need much speed because these are mostly things like printers, laptops or my Philips U bridge for example. And I've also connected my PoE switch to the fourth port of the firewall. And these two ports are bridged together so that means they are in the same local network. This is important to keep in mind because I also connected my servers directly to the firewall by using this FlexiPort module which is a 10 gigabit one. And these ports on the FlexiPort module are also bridged together, so they are in the same server network and they can talk to each other, but not on the same network as my switches. So I've put these ports into two different zones on the firewall because then I can better control which traffic is allowed to come in and go out. And I also can create firewall rules to do malware scanning or traffic filtering to better protect and isolate my servers from the rest of the network. And this is really cool. Let me explain this in more detail and how you generally configure things like that on the firewall. When I set up a new firewall first, I usually configure some general settings like the initial deployment, the licensing, downloading the latest firmware and so on. And I don't think I need to walk you through all of this stuff because this is actually very straightforward to set up. The interesting part I want to show you is the network and interface configuration that I changed on the firewall. So first I created a layer 2 bridge interface with the name LAN underscore BR and I bound the ports 1 and the port 4 together. Remember the first port goes to my switch and the second goes to my PUE switch which I have connected my home devices to. I've put both ports into the LAN zone and added the 10.10 .10 IPv4 network with a subnet mask of 16 to this interface. And this gives me a really huge IP address range for my home network. Not that I need it for anything, but yeah, it just looks nice. The second layer 2 bridge that I created is called DMZ underscore BR and that bounds all the 10 gigabit ports on the firewall together. I've put them all in the DMZ zone in the 10.20 network, also with a subnet mask of 16. This connects my servers, the virtual machines, the NAS and everything like this. I mostly use static IP addresses for all of these machines that are also managed on the firewall. So all of my servers are assigned to groups here, which contain the IP addresses for the actual servers. And I later can use these objects in the firewall rules to define the access to my internal server network. I later also might differentiate this further into VLANs because I want to put several VMs on my Proxmox server into different networks. But this is a project for upcoming videos. Currently putting all of these servers into one single network is fine. The main reason why I'm doing all of this is I want to isolate my servers from the rest of my home network and control with firewall rules which services and IP addresses can be accessed. Because as you probably know, a firewall system like this only allows traffic to pass through if a firewall rule matches this specific traffic. For example, I have created one firewall rule that allows all devices from my LAN and the DMZ zone to connect to the WAN zone, but not anywhere else. This just allows basic internet access for all of the devices in my network. But if I want to connect from my PC, which is in the LAN zone, to my servers, which are in the DMZ zone, I need another firewall rule to specifically allow this. And because I don't want everyone in my home network to access my servers, I created another firewall rule where I defined that only authenticated users are allowed to connect from the LAN zone to any target in the DMZ zone. With that firewall rule, I'm ensuring that only administrators have full access to my servers. Mainly this is a firewall rule just for me, because I'm the only administrator in my home network. But the interesting part here is that the Surfers XG doesn't just work with IP addresses and zones. It can also allow traffic based on users. So when I want to access my servers, I always need to authenticate with a Surfers client on my PC first to match this firewall rule and access my servers. Now, in a typical company environment, you might also have external authentication providers you can set up in the firewall. So, for example, you can create a connection to an Active Directory or to an LDAP to authenticate users to the firewall and even synchronize the authentication with a Sophos endpoint client. And this works even in large environments and networks with thousands of users. And this is perfect to add another layer of protection to your network stack. 
However, I still might want to allow unauthorized traffic in some cases. Because my servers are also running some workloads that should be accessible for everyone in my home network. So for example, this is my password manager I've set up or my Minecraft server that I want to play on with my son. So I have created other firewall rules and this allows access to my servers even when the user is not authenticated but only to specific IP addresses and ports. So this can give anyone access to specific services and workloads running on my virtual servers or maybe I could also configure access to my storage server if I'd like to do file sharing with other PCs and so on. The point is that when you set up or allow unauthorized access on your firewall, you should at least always limit your IP addresses and services or protocols which are permitted. So for example, with these firewall rules, everyone in my home network can connect to my Minecraft server, but not to the SSH port. Uh, but this is not all. The Sophos XG firewall doesn't just look at IP addresses and ports. It can also look inside the network protocol stack and is able to detect malicious patterns, exploits, malware and so on. Now this is possible because the Sophos engineers included a bunch of different scanning engines into the system, which are all handled by the new Xtreme architecture. And this is a high performant architecture that can decrypt and scan HTTPS traffic with the latest protocols. It can detect and block malware by including sandboxing and artificial intelligence. And you can also accelerate traffic and do things like SD-WAN or prioritization of application and protocols. No, I get this is overwhelming. To explain all of this stuff, I probably would need a full one hour long video again. But to give you a brief overview of what it does, you can enable any of these protection features per firewall rule. So you can, for example, use the IPS engine to scan the network traffic to your servers and search for specific exploits. Do you still remember the recent log4j vulnerability, for example? So that incidents where so many Java applications were affected with? So in the Sophos XG, there are IPS patterns that can detect and block this particular exploit. And if you enable this IPS policy in your firewall rule that allows traffic to your servers, the firewall will detect and block these specific attacks even before they ever reach your servers. And just like this example, there are many, many more of these well-known IPS signatures Sophos maintains for the firewall. I don't want to go into too much detail here because there's so much you can do with this. I already made a video about the Sophos XG home version on my Proxmox server, which you can set up entirely for free, by the way. And in this one, I covered some of the advanced filtering engines like the web protection, the application protection and so on. And from a software or protection side, there is just a very minimal difference between the virtual version and the hardware appliance here. The features on the system are actually the same. The only advantage the firewall appliance has, it is optimized for these computing tasks. So when you have a lot of scanning engines enabled in your firewall rule, the hardware appliance will accelerate and offload this traffic a bit more efficient than the virtual ones. Anyway, I think I have explained the most important concept here, and that is to separate your network. This is really the foundation for a good security concept, because if you're putting everything on one single network, the firewall is never in control of this internal traffic and you can't effectively protect your critical services. So here the Sophos XGS really helps me a lot, because I can put everything on a different interface and I can bound interfaces together and put them in different network zones. And I know, creating firewall rules for every traffic and every protocol and everything in your home network, that can be a challenge, but it is absolutely vital to protect your servers. And this is a great practice for everyone who needs to administrate networks in companies. So I can just encourage you, start looking into firewall systems for your home lab. It doesn't need to be complicated, but you can just start somewhere. And then as your knowledge expands, you can also think about new security policies or firewall rules you're setting up. Okay, so enough for firewall rules, that was a lot. But let me also show you what I'm using the Sophos XGS for to manage my Wi-Fi access points in my home network, because this is also a feature that is extremely useful. It is not very complex to explain, so we can just go through this very quickly. But this is actually the point. It should be as simple as possible. The only thing I needed to do to set up my new access points is to enable the Wi-Fi in the zone that is attached to the PoE switch. In my case, the LAN zone. And then I just connected my access points to my PoE switch and they will automatically show up in the Sophos XG wireless dashboard. All these access points are controllable through this dashboard, so you can group them, you can set up things like the SSID, the password, the Wi-Fi channels and all of this stuff. 
All the changes are applied to the selected access points remotely, so you don't have any web interface where you need to go and configure them one by one. And this is absolutely fantastic. Of course, I have configured some other things on the firewall as well, but I'm still not finished with all of it because I'm going to change a lot of things here, like adding new servers and I want to change my network switches and so on. Uh, by the way, there's something really interesting for you Sophos fans coming. I don't want to talk about it too much right now, but I hope this video already gave you some ideas and inspiration about protecting your network and why it's always a great idea to have such a firewall. Again, I just want to say if you're interested in buying these firewall appliances, this device here is an absolute overkill for usual home lab. <laughs> and as I've told you, I've done many setups with virtual Sophos XGs and free home licenses, which I was running before myself. So if you want to check out how you can use the Sophos XG at home as a virtual machine, for example, and if you want to have a deep dive into setting up TLS inspection, network protection and other firewall rules, check out my other video that I did some time ago about the Sophos XG. And if I will change something interesting in my home lab, be sure that I will let you know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. Take care and I will catch you in the next video. Bye bye. I will let you know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. Take care and I will catch you in the next video. Bye bye.